Yo! <laughs> Yo, the secret truth behind David Blaine's magic. David Blaine is one of my favorite magicians uh, because, I mean, obviously he's like mainstream. No, I'm not even gonna lie. It's not even just because he's mainstream. It's just because the way he like, just the way he does his magic. He always has a like a dead voice. Like his voice is always bland and his face is always just like straight face and like, this is what I'm gonna do. So no, look in, look in your pocket. Look in your pocket. That's your card, right? You That's your card that you personally signed, right? Yeah, I know. It's weird. Uh, cause even Chris, An when Chris Angels was popping, like when he was popping like that, I still didn't really like, I don't know. It was just something about Chris Angels that I just didn't, I didn't really fuck with it. It was just something about him was weird or like extra, but I feel like David Bland's just perfect because David Bland, David Blaine, David Blaine is just, is just perfect. Cause he just, he just does his shit. And really the energy comes from the people's reaction. So he doesn't really need to have much. Most people live their lives with the belief that magic isn't real. David Blaine is commonly known as one of the most iconic- Yeah, so faking. Mind freak. Like even his intro to his show or whatever, mind freak. I was like, it's so over the top. Magicians in modern times. But simplifying David's stunts, illusions, and performances as just magic gives the assumption that it's all fake. However, standing in a block of ice for three days, being submerged in water for seven days, and being trapped in a glass box for 44 days. Can we talk about how he also got shot in the mouth as well? Like he got shot in the mouth. Can we talk about that, please? were all very real stunts that thousands of people witness with their own two eyes. Yet still, some are not convinced. This man swallow, like how can you, this man swallows frogs, puts needles through his hands, swallows frogs and then brings them back up, by the way. And they're still moving around. He has been called a fake, a fraud, a jester, and they do anything to invalidate his work. Oh, fuck. Despite him. the annoying critics and borderline physical torture, David Blaine continued to up the ante throughout his career. But why? Well, because he feels most alive when he is just about to die. That's crazy. And this is how he continuously chased that feeling. I ain't gonna lie. His, his movie? His movie? His movie would go crazy. Magicians have always been entertainers who perform in front of an audience with the intention to bend their minds. Typically, they sport a flashy outfit, a big stage with lights, smoke machines, and additional performers to create a spectacular experience worthy of a 100 plus dollar ticket price. I don't think I could ever go to a magician show though, like a live show, because I just feel like it would be the one time that I go that something goes wrong and it, it would literally just stay with me forever. Their tricks can be long and drawn out, constantly diverting your attention all over the stage. The audience ooing and eyeing. The performance crescendos to the abracadabra or voila moment that sends the overstimulated audience into an uproar of applause. However, David Blaine was the total opposite of this. That's it what I'm saying. You see how kind of, like, not, not to take away from anything here, but you see how kind of extra he is and it's like, so much pizzazz on that shit. Like, dog, just do your trick. Why are you looking at me? Like, you trying to fuck me. Abra or voila moment that sends the overstimulated audience no, I want you to... into an uproar of applause. Now I want you to pull the card out of my mouth. No, with not, not with your hands. With each cheek of your buttocks. However, David <laughs> Blaine was the total opposite of this. David wore a plain shirt and sweats. The OG doing pranks, doing pranks in the hood. He was emotionless in the face and gave small focused crowds of people magic on the street for free. He primarily did card tricks and some quarter tricks where he encouraged people to pay attention as closely as possible. The tricks were nothing spectacular, but what made it interesting is, were the reactions of the people. Is this your card? What? What? Look. <laughs> Go ahead, turn your hand over. <laughs> Hell no! Hell no! Blaine this nigga performed for all walks of life, all races, all ages, and the outcome was always the same: being utterly confused or shocked by something they saw with their own two eyes. His simplistic approach made other magicians hate him. When Blaine landed his first primetime really? television show on ABC in 1997, he was immediately met with criticism. A New York Times article was released that insinuated the virtually unknown street magician was <sighs> only given a special because he had friends in some very high places. Oh my gosh, it seemed like anywhere, like, it don't matter who you are, bro. If you up, niggas is just gonna be hating and be mad.
is. One professional magician insisted Blaine's best tricks could be found for about $30 at a Times Square magic shop. Jamie Ian Swiss, a magician and columnist for Genie Magic Magazine said, his only skill is removing money from a wallet and handing it to a person behind the counter. And your only skill is walking outside with that fucking haircut and being confident, bro. That's that's t That takes amazing skill. Shut your bitch ass up, my nigga. Who are you? I don't even know who you are. Even with your picture, I don't even know who you are. I got your back, David. <laughs> I got your back, David, because if ain't nobody gonna say something, I'm gonna say something, damn it. Fuck that nigga. Swiss asserted that ABC... You know what his, his greatest trick is? That he's he's this big guy in articles, yet his name is unknown to me. Crazy. He looks like a million other white old men I've seen before. Executives had the wool pulled over their eyes. It also didn't help that in his first major interview on Conan, he was so nervous he messed up his card trick. His first mistake was when he made this extremely choppy pass. You can see him move the deck from back to front. Then he attempts to do a double lift, which is when he grabs two cards and makes you think he only grabbed one. Oh no. Bro, he was nervous. Don't, don't watch it. Uh, don't play it. Just, you know, just talk about it, Patrick. You don't need to show it, man. But he struggled while trying to grab two. Luckily, he recovered, and most people would never notice the errors. Oh. Blaine had no interest in addressing the criticism. They were likely just hating on him. Fuck he em. simply wanted to make magic accessible to as many people as possible. David was inspired by the great Harry Houdini, who brought magic to people on the streets. Plus, we have the benefit of hindsight now, and we know that the traditional magic show aged like milk, and street performances or interviews is a format that remains extremely relevant 25 years later on yeah. TikTok, the number one app in the world. How I mean, we was literally just watching, like, I just binged all that shit. However, card tricks were not enough to keep David going. He wanted to push himself to greater limits, put his life on the line to prove he is truly one of a kind, which led to his first major- Harry got nothing downstairs, goddamn. Can you pay attention? Okay, can you pay attention? Damn! Major public stunt being buried alive for a week straight. Harry Houdini actually performed at least three variations of the stunt during his career. David was mesmerized by a poster of the final version of this stunt that Houdini never got to complete due to his early death. Houdini was going to escape after being strapped in a straight jacket, sealed in a casket, and then buried in a large tank filled with sand. So I, I stare at, I love that poster since I was a kid. It's like in the magic books, you see that poster. Initially, his friend and founder of the Conjuring Arts Research Center, Bill Kalush, that suggested crazy. that Blaine fake the stunt and discreetly sneak out of the coffin, then return a month later before the resurrection. But Blaine had no interest in faking. Mm. So he bought a casket, put it in his living room, and practiced sleeping in it. Then he practiced fasting for multiple days. He said he was able to do this for four days straight with no problem. Wow. So his goal was one week, buried alive in a glass casket so anyone could come and watch him. On April 5th, 1999, the 45th president of the United States, wow. Donald Trump, gave the final send-off as David Blaine entered the see-through coffin that also had six tons of water on top. Blaine didn't eat for two weeks before the stunt, but continued drinking water prior to and during the stunt. Oxygen was transferred in and out through holes above his head. Why a catheter fuck? was inserted into Blaine's bladder to safely drain any urine. Ooh. Spectators would come and go whenever they wanted. He said people would shine flashlights on him at 2 a.m. to make sure he was really in there. He said one of the hardest parts of the stunt was peeing while people were looking at him. I suffered a little in here for this week, but I saw something truly incredible. People smiling and that made all of this worth it. Critics said that he had a trap door on the side of the oh coffin that God. led to another secret underground room with more space, food, and magazines to keep him entertained while a body double took his place inside the coffin. Nigga, they what? often pointed to the water being on top as unnecessary and was only there to distort people's vision so they couldn't tell the difference between him and the body double. And honestly, these are decent critiques, but David was about to endure something far more dangerous than the buried alive stunt something that would be significantly harder to invalidate. But first, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Aura. Have you ever Googled your name and seen yourself on one of those strange sites that has way too much information oh, about you? It feels fucking... pretty weird. I'd rather have that stuff not available to just anyone who's looking for it. Data brokers are making so much money selling your information to you so much more to protect them off you. a week free trip. No, dressed in a place in the middle of Times Square for in the year 2000, Blaine set out to remain frozen in a block of ice in the middle of Times Square for 72 hours. After training for a year with ice-cold water, Blaine believed he was ready to endure a stunt he called Frozen in Time. 
lightly dressed in a long sleeve t-shirt, I some this. pants, and I a beanie, remember this. Blaine began shivering as blocks of ice were placed around him. I a tube this. supplied him with air and water. While his urine was removed with another tube, the ice was transparent and resting on an elevated platform to show that he was actually inside the ice the entire time. During the stunt, Blaine couldn't sleep because touching the ice with any part of his body for a long period of time would have caused frostbite. frostbite. Around hour 55, his eyes went out, and he started hallucinating, saying that he was talking to imaginary people, and they were talking back, and spiders were crawling all over him. But he knew he was in serious trouble when he thought a few hours had so this look like Aura dies. ...passed, <laughs> when in reality, only one minute had passed. And I was convinced that I was dead and she could no longer see me. As the crowd shouts, let him out, the assistants decide to set him free, despite David's demands to not let him out before the 72 hour goal under any circumstance. Blaine was ultimately confined in the box of ice for 63 hours, 42 minutes, and 15 seconds before being removed with chainsaws. He nearly died in that ice, but he just as easily could have died from shock after he exited the ice. He was immediately taken to the hospital for treatment. It took one month to fully recover. He said Jeez. he couldn't move his feet for weeks, but this time the critics were silenced. There was no way to fake this. Whether you saw it on TV or in real life, you knew this was as real as it gets. David told himself that he would never attempt a stunt of this difficulty in the future, but his yearning to face death would creep up again just two years later. Blaine swallowed a live snake and fantasized about doing you-know-what from the Brooklyn Bridge or dangling from a skyscraper. Nothing was too risky for him, and each stunt had an increased amount of danger to keep it interesting. Vertigo, which accompanied an hour-long film, was extremely risky, but also beautifully artistic. In the middle of Manhattan, Blaine stood atop a two-foot wide pillar nearly this. 10 stories tall in this. New York City for two days and two nights with no food, no water, no sleep, and nothing to sit or lean on. This is one of his most underrated performances. 99.99% of us could not even stand for 35 hours straight, let alone being 100 feet in the air constantly battling the wind. There was no safety net or precautions set in place in case he fell, but the beautiful part about this stunt was its impact on the people. Thousands of New Yorkers halted their hectic and strenuous lives just to look- Of course it's New York. What the hell is that guy doing up there? Cup and David. <laughs> Yo, get down! The found things you could do uh, in Midtown Manhattan is Yo, are you still, fucking crazy? Uh, let alone for any length of time. You know, to stand still for, for uh, hours upon hours, a day and a half in fact. Uh... What the fuck? <laughs> this is a profound gesture. It's not giving New York, man. For New York right now. As David put his mind and body on- Yo, dude is wild and beat- Pan a camera! <laughs> on the line, he began hallucinating, which caused the buildings and structures around him to look like animal heads. Then, at the last hour, David jumped off the pillar, not on a cushy airbag, but rather a pile of empty cardboard boxes, and he somehow executed the jump perfectly. David was not just some lunatic adrenaline Shrippin'. junkie. He was a performance Sin. Sin. artist Sin. who sacrificed Sin. his well-being mm. for your entertainment. He even refused to get into personal relationships. I know that if I had kids, I wouldn't want to put them through the feeling that their father's in danger, which is why I am reluctant to get into a relationship and think about that right now. But he does this have led a kid. to so many people wondering why. Why is he constantly putting his life on the line? Is it really for the sake of magic? Well, the motivation behind all of David's stunts is actually much darker than we thought. And we learned this while he was preparing for his 2003 stunt, Above the Below. I like how he still ha like bases his artwork on like that, post that poster that he saw when he was younger. It's fire. Above the Below where he'd be confined in a three feet by seven feet by seven feet transparent no, plexiglass uh, box suspended 30 feet in the air in the middle of London. His goal was to stay in this box. How's this magic? Well, I mean, magic tricks in general is just more of like a shocking, you know, thing, a wow factor, like, what? Oh my God. Da, da, da. So I guess that's like what it is. It's a performance at the end of the day. For over a month. I also consider it something that, for me, is like the ultimate truth. When you live with nothing, 
There's no distractions. You're just there as you are, struggling. I think that's the purest state you can be in. Blaine later expressed how he loved the idea of death and hated life. So these stunts really make me feel great, and I love making people watch suffering because I had to watch it my whole life. Watch mm. people I loved and were close to deteriorate and die. I saw everybody I knew, my mother, my father, drop dead. I feel the most alive when I'm going through these experiences. That David's was pretty dark. so cool because he's just a guy living his life. Damn. There isn't much information. Get therapy? That probably is his therapy. Information about David's personal life and childhood. We know he was raised by a single mother. He says his father was never in his life. His mother was his first fan. He spent his days as a 10 year old reading magic books, practicing tricks, and performing them for her and her friends. At 15, she developed cancer, so his magic became her escape. When he was 17, he moved out of their New Jersey home and ventured into the Big Apple. Sadly, just three years later, she passed away. We know today that David is a very positive, forward thinking, and happy man, but for the most of his career, he had an extremely dark presence. It's unclear if his persona is just an act, or if it really is him wearing his demons on his sleeve. Mm. But either way, if he didn't survive his next stunt, Blaine wanted to be remembered as the greatest showman of all time. Mm. In September of 2003, Blaine sealed himself inside the box. A webcam was also installed inside the box to observe his progress over 44 days. Despite Blaine clearly partaking in this endurance stunt, many became skeptical, with some theorizing that he used holograms or body doubles. People were also suspicious regarding his starvation, claiming his water supply was laced with nutritional glucose and sodium supplements oh, which he added oh my god just say Did you hate you hear about the guy who tight roped across the twin towers with no wires and the mayor made the guy a public attraction uh -oh. bro i ain't gonna lie at that point just say you hate the nigga bro just say you hate him Emily denied. David wasn't prepared for the hostility that came with being in a foreign country. Blaine was pelted with eggs and paint-filled balloons. You think David ever said nigga? Golf balls were also struck in his direction from tap. Wait, if there's a movie about that tightrope thing, I seen it. Which means I did know about it. But like I didn't. I thought I thought that was I didn't know that was a real thing. I thought it was just a movie. Power bridge. Tabloids who were skeptical of his performance took the opportunity to stage barbecues beneath Blaine and even flew hamburgers up to his box using a remote controlled helicopter to taunt him. One man even attempted to sever the pipe that was supplying him with water. But don't get me wrong, the support definitely outshined the hate. And they kept his spirits high until the stunt eventually ended after 44 days. This has been one of the most important experiences of my life. David works closely with scientists and health professionals to study the human body through his performances. A lot of the time, they end up with more questions than answers. The New England Journal of Medicine published a paper documenting his 44-day fast and stating his refeeding process was perhaps the most dangerous part of the stunt. Blaine only drank distilled water during his time in the box. The water lacked important minerals or vitamins. In the hospital, he was injected with an IV to replenish his system. However, his body almost went into shock, which nearly killed him. The study report reported that he lost 24 and a half kilograms or 54 pounds, which was 25% of his original body weight, and his body mass index dropped from 29 to 21.6. Ironically though, it was David's biggest failure that got him the most attention. How did he, like, how does he even get paid for this? His failure came from attempting to break the world record for holding his breath underwater. As a young magician, I was obsessed with Houdini and his underwater challenges. So I began early on competing against the other kids. By the time I was a teenager, I was Sponsors, able to hold true. my breath yeah, for true. three minutes and 30 seconds. I would later find out that was Houdini's personal record. To grasp how long he could realistically hold his breath, Blaine met with a top neurosurgeon who informed Blaine that anything over six minutes could have the risk of hypoxic brain damage. He took this as a challenge. He began researching pearl divers and discovered various aspects of free diving. The first thing that he learned is when you're holding your breath, you should never move because that wastes energy and depletes oxygen since physical movement builds up CO2 in your blood. He also- Uh... Like, that's a fake shark? Like, what? Uh, what the fuck? <laughs> like, that's just to make it look cool, right? You know, for the, for the show? 
but learned how to purge, which is when you repeatedly blow air in and out rapidly. After a while, you get lightheaded and start feeling tingly because you're ridding your body of CO2, making it easier to hold your breath. For months, he did this every morning. I would wake up and hold my breath for 48 minutes out of the course of every hour. I'd breathe for a minute, hold my breath for five minutes immediately after, and then right after that, breathe a minute, hold for six minutes, and keep going for all the way up to an hour. In that process, your CO2 levels become so high, your body has to work like a marathon runner to get rid of it. By the end, his brain was completely fried and suffered awful migraines. He also lost 50 pounds in three months when he learned- Damn, what's that? Oh, is the strawberry? Thank you, I appreciate you. Strawberry. Strawberry ice cream. Learned that the thinner he was, the longer he could hold his breath. By eating so well and training hard, his resting heart rate dropped to 38 beats per minute, which is lower than most Olympic athletes. Mm. Blaine figured he could place a water tank at Lincoln Center in New York City, and if he stayed there a week without eating, he would get comfortable in that environment, ultimately slowing down his metabolism, which would help him hold his breath for longer. But he was wrong. Blaine entered the sphere for a week before the scheduled air date, but producers confronted him and told him that just watching somebody holding their breath and almost drowning would be too boring for television. In response, Blaine added handcuffs, which he planned to escape from. I'll have Aww. to escape from all these chains, and if not, I will drown and the world will see something pretty insane. Blaine was submerged underwater and remained there for seven days while attached to a breathing apparatus. He underestimated how painful his hands would be after they shriveled up. When seven days had passed, Blaine attached the chains and handcuffs, removed his oxygen tube, and then attempted to escape while holding his breath for longer than anyone in recorded history. However, because of the movement, Blaine was wasting oxygen. After he passed the seven minute threshold, he began having convulsions and gradually blacked I remember out. This. Kirk Crack, his trainer, and a diving expert sent divers to release him and pull him from the tank. He failed to beat the record, and doubters all over the world celebrated his defeat. But that, he allowed research- Bro, that is so weird. Like there, there are, and I'm not surprised by this because this happens to me, bro. This happens to other people who just do their shit. They just do their shit. There are people when you fail, cheer on. Get in a group and be like, yo, look at this. He failed again. He fucked something up. He did this. He fucking sucks. Oh my gosh. I knew it. This nigga's corny. Oh my God, bitch. What the fuck? Yo, chat, this can even happen in the scale in the scales of like even your work environment. Like you may just be a regular person who's just doing your regular shift at work. And there are niggas you work with who secretly just do not like you for whatever reason it is the way you walk the way you pull up in your car the way your your energy might be in the second you do something wrong and then the manager is snapping at you publicly they all together talking about like oh my god it's about time that nigga think he's so perfect when you're literally just doing like you've just been doing you that nigga think he's so perfect it's about time that nigga got snapped on like oh my god bro the human body is so fascinating there's a video of how someone survived 7,200 volts of electricity, coming out of it completely fine then later died because his body now needs jolts of electricity to live. What? That's like some superhero shit. Searchers at Yale to examine him after the stunt to see what they could learn about how the body responds to an underwater environment, which he saw as a big victory. Now faced with a failure, more people than ever were tuned in and wanted to see what he had in store. So he got in contact with Oprah yep. and announced he wanted to up the ante on the show. Is. He wanted to hold his breath longer than any human in recorded history, which was set at 13 minutes at the time. Oprah gave Blaine four months to prepare and train. And in those four months, someone came and actually upped the record to 16 and a half minutes. Who the fuck we know that David takes his training very serious. Who did that? Damn, he don't even get a name? <laughs> Boy, don't even get rec recognition. 16 minutes? What the fuck? But when it came time to do this stunt, things started going wrong. Blaine wanted to do the challenge. Hold on, I gotta, I gotta find it. I, I guess I gotta look right here. 16 minutes? Who held they out? Breath? Okay, okay, so I guess so recently someone just broke this this record. Um cuz who the fuck is this? Diver Bootymir? <laughs> uh Bootymir Sabadat, professional breath holder diver, blah, blah, blah. world record of 24 minutes and 37 seconds. What the fuck?
challenge face down, floating on the pool. But for TV, they wanted him to be upright so they could see his face. The other problem was that the suit was so buoyant that he had to strap his feet in to keep him from floating. It made him extremely nervous, raising his heart rate. On top of that, they wanted to add a heart rate monitor. The monitor was placed right outside the sphere, meaning every time his heart would beat, he'd hear loud beep noises, which made him even more nervous. Normally, his heart rate would start at 38 beats per minute, and while holding his breath, it would drop to 12 beats per minute. This time, it started at 120 beats, and it never went down. He became more nervous, increasing his heart rate up to 150 beats. At 8 See? minutes, he was 100% certain he would not be able to- Bro, is these damn, is these damn network companies and just the, the big CEOs at the top of shit that just don't understand shit? And that comes with, bro, that comes with, like, streaming and Twitch, too. Like, uh... The shit that Kai doing, like the shit that Kai be on, and it's just like Twitch just don't understand, bro. Play the video. How about I play these three minutes of ads? We watch that, and then we, and and uh, you can tell me about that, bro. But it's like, bro, these people just don't, they, they just don't be understanding. Like he's holding his breath, and they're talking about that's not going to be entertaining enough. We need to now have him in chains and hold him down and do all this like movement and shit. Like, damn, like, bro, I think that would be fine enough. Like, what the fuck? Able to complete the mission. For the sake of Oprah's show and his unwillingness to fail, he would fight until he blacked out. At minute 12, he started Stop to have ringing dick. in his ears, and simultaneously, his arm began to go numb. He was showing signs of a heart attack. At thir Zora says, I hate you. I don't even know you, bro. 13 minutes, he started feeling pains all over his chest. <laughs> At 15, I don't even know who you are. Minutes, he was suffering major O2 deprivation to the heart. His heartbeat would go from 120 to 50, to 150 to 40, to 20, to 150 again. At 16 minutes, Blaine cautiously slid his feet out of the straps to make it easier for the rescuers to take him out if he suffered a heart attack. Then suddenly, he heard screaming. He realized he had just made it to 1632 and broke the record. So with the energy of everybody that was there, he kept pushing. And he went for 17 minutes and 4 seconds. Nice. Live on Oprah, he broke a world record, which got him middle-aged woman-level fame. David Blaine was known all around the world, and he started to get cocky, which led to easily his worst stunt ever. In September 2008, Blaine announced his Upside Down Man performance. Blaine aimed to hang upside down from a crane for 60 hours without food or sleep for the entire two and a half days. Yeah, Doctors tripping. would be present to monitor Blaine throughout the stunt, but warned that increased blood pressure raised the risk of stroke or blindness while gravity could restrict the blood flow to his lower extremities. Come September 22nd, Blaine began the stunt, wearing a safety harness attached to a crossbar. He dangled by his feet from a large steel scaffold, hanging over New York Central Dumb Park. However, early into the stunt, bystanders began emailing news sources claiming Blaine wasn't hanging upside down as suggested. About once an hour, he has to come down for a medical check, to stretch, and to relieve himself. He rested by standing on a platform for 10 minutes per hour before being hoisted back up. The frequent breaks he took where he was seen standing upright caused people to say he was cheating. Blaine continued with the stunt despite the negative reception, but it got even worse. On the final day of the stunt, thousands of fans came to witness Blaine's dive of death, which he said would be the coolest thing he's ever done if everything were to go that as planned. So Blaine planned to end his 60-hour stint hanging upside down with a 44-foot plunge to the ground, but the scheduled finale was interrupted by a 15-minute delay. The anticipation built. Nobody knew what was going to happen, but it was being hyped up. In that time, Blaine claimed the wind picked up, and producers of his TV special advised him against the spectacular ending. He eventually just jumped. The crowd didn't know if the stunt was actually performed, which led to this extremely anticlimactic situation where he was caught mid-air, then awkwardly dangled above the ground for a minute before being slowly carried away into what? the night sky. What the the New York Daily News ridiculed Blaine with the headline, give us a break. They said that there were more boos than cheers as the stunt ended. Blaine God. accepted responsibility for the outcome, disappointing fans. I knew that it didn't work right when all my friends called me up and said, wait, what happened? I'm confused. This prompted a little break for David. He was world famous now and made some decent money from his movies and his book. He became a go-to talent for celebrity birthday parties, corporate events, and charities. He didn't want to rush anything this to avoid fire. another catastrophe. Plus, something amazing happened. In 2011, yes, he had his first child, Dessa, with his then-girlfriend, Alizé. David always said that if he had a wife or child, his performances would slow down, and that's exactly what happened. Okay. Maybe just one more, because being electrocuted was something he always wanted to do. Becoming a dad, it changes you. You now have a purpose in life. I think differently about what I'm doing, and this time we have a very serious team, and I feel very confident that I'll pull this off and be perfectly fine at the end. That's With the help true. of the Liberty Science Center, a chainmail suit, 
and an enormous array of Tesla electrical coils, he planned to stand atop a 20-foot high pillar for 72 hours without sleep or food while being subjected to a million volts of electricity. Blaine prepared for the stunt at home, where he practiced giving himself mild electrical shocks. Nobody's ever been in the middle of a lightning storm for 72 How the fuck hours, you just so it's yourself? hard to predict what's going to happen. The chainmail suit, commonly known as a Faraday suit, has been designed so that the current would go through the suit and not through his body. Blaine's only real physical challenge was standing it. still in a heavy suit for three days which we all know is a piece of cake for him. He did suffer a little zap during the event. Oh, what was that? But he recovered very quickly. Although the stunt looked incredibly dangerous, it was more of a visual art piece than an insane endurance stunt, especially compared to his previous work. The event was broadcasted live on YouTube entitled Electrified. Viewers located in London, Beijing, Tokyo, and Sydney had the opportunity to take turns controlling which of the seven coils were turned on and at what intensity. They could also play music by producing different notes from the coils. The event had various entertainers and gave off the vibe of a festival or a big party. That's Everything fire. went as planned, and Blaine completed the stunt after spending three days and three nights standing in the middle of one million volts of electric currents at New York's Pier 54. Afterwards, he could walk with assistants, speak, and engage with others before being taken to a hospital to be examined. Easy David successfully cheated death on multiple different Easy stunts bag. for 15 years. It was time to go back to his roots. In 2013, Blaine starred in a 90-minute ABC television special titled David Blaine, Real or Magic. He ventured across America from New York to Los Angeles and visited tons of A-list celebrities like Robert De Niro, Jamie Fox, Ricky Gervais, Katy Perry, Kanye West, Michael Phelps, President George W. Bush, among many others. In 2016, he had another special titled Beyond Magic. It followed the same formula as the last and featured another wide range of celebrities. Funny enough, it was these clips that made the rounds on social media that made him extremely famous to Gen Z. They probably don't even know him from his performance art, but rather his sticking a needle through his arm yep. or putting an ice pick through his hand. Yep. By the way, both of these tricks aren't really tricks. He just performed it so many times until he built up enough scar tissue so he wouldn't bleed. Same thing with him eating glass. There's no trick. He is just eating glass. Oh, and making frogs magically appear out of his mouth? Well, he has to fast for 36 hours so he has no food digesting in his system. Then he That's just the best. When he does that shit and he shows them, I forgot who, what celebrity it was, but it's like, I see it, nigga, I see it. <laughs> he drinks multiple gallons of water so the frogs have a safe place to live in his stomach. He swallows them. He can keep them there for as long as three hours while he does other things. Then he can force them up his esophagus and freak out his audience as they come out of his mouth. His final stunt in 2020 consisted of him strapping his mm. hand to a cluster of 52 helium-filled balloons using this. a harness. He ascended nearly 25,000 feet into the sky before he released the balloons and free fell for a couple of seconds before deploying a parachute to slow his descent. Easily the most beautiful visual performance he has ever created, and it was all dedicated to his daughter. Mm -hmm. At one point, the world was convinced we were going to watch David Blaine die performing. He probably thought he would too. It seems like he wouldn't have even cared, as long as he secured his legacy as the greatest performer of all time. Now he has a daughter to take care of, and a mission to keep magic alive. He has inspired a whole new generation That's of fire. magicians on TikTok. I feel like I am constantly seeing people perform magic tricks on the For You page. And if you think about it, Mr. Beast has used David Blaine's formula to become successful. Buried alive, starving himself, 24 hours in ice. However, Mr. Beast is pretty transparent about it being for views, money, and entertainment rather than straight up endurance art. It's sad that many people still to this day do not see the greatness in David's career. They try to find anything to negate the validity of his performances. It's like a constant puzzle they feel like they need to figure out. As we all know, magicians never reveal their secrets. And the real secret is how David survived his performances throughout the years. I'm not sure how, but I'm really glad he did. Chat, when you a goat, there's always gonna be people talking shit like the bitch ass niggas in my what the fuck you talking about? When you are a goat, there's always niggas that's gonna be talking shit. There's always people that's gonna hate on you for whatever reason. You're just doing what you're doing. You're minding your business, doing your own thing to entertain people. And then there will be those niggas that don't even need to be in your presence. That want to be in your presence just to talk shit, just to hate, just to get mad about dumb, dumb ass shit. It's, 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 it's fucking hilarious. But watching this video, you know, like I already knew this before, but now it like really lets me know, like, oh my God, it don't matter what you do. <laughs> it don't matter what you do. These niggas will hate hate the fuck out of you bro. they will hate the fuck out of you and it's 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 what they're supposed to do they're viewers you're you're a spectator you're a spectator meant to spectate greats do what they do you're a spectator meant to spectate people who are great at making people laugh making people go like oh my god what is he doing great at making people think 
great at making people do what they not you know normally doing you know you, you just bringing something to the table that uh that they can't just get you know they can't just do themselves otherwise they would just be doing it themselves like like watching a video bro <laughs> you can literally watch the video yourself like why why are you here watching me watch the video telling me to stop pausing the video <laughs> go watch the video yourself but it's something about it it's something about me that when i watch the video i don't know you like it i don't know why like what the fuck <laughs> i don't know why the fuck um I, like I said, I'm just here just doing me, bro. Outlast today. No, we're not doing Outlast today. We will do Outlast uh probably it'll be some it'll be someday this week, but not not tonight, not tonight. There's like already like a couple of things uh a couple of things we got to do or a couple of things we're going to do. And y'all talking about this Simon shit, bro. This Simon video like an hour long. Hold on, let me look. This Simon video like an hour long. Like I don't even know if we're going to do that today. Let me see. Simon Oh my God, they got Deji on here. Because also, yo, also, y'all were talking about this. I wanted to check this out. Um, Because, chat, it's just these five, it's just these six videos, right? Because this is just the, all of them combined. But someone was saying, like, the, the audio is, like, fucked up on this shit. Shut up, my nigga, I don't say, oh. Um, uh, 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 uh. Street Fighter Six. Trust me, I want to play Street Fighter Six, but uh, the beta ended. <laughs> the beta fucking the beta fucking ended, bro. Oh my gosh, I'm so mad. Why are we watching these? I mean, somebody said it was cool, bro. They they just said it was cool, but it's just, bro. I don't know if I want to watch a whole hour. Like, I don't know if I want to watch an hour video right now. Like, you know what, chat? Look, look. look. We will save that video, okay? We will save that vi the uh we will save the Deji video, okay? We're going to watch it. We're going to watch it. But we will save it for either tomorrow. We're going to watch it. We'll do it tomorrow. We'll do it tomorrow. We will watch it tomorrow, okay? I we will save it for uh tomorrow. I will watch it, but I just can't do it. I, I can't do an hour right now, bro. I cannot do an hour right now. That shit is the See, this is like 30 minutes, but a poll bro if i do a poll i already know what y'all are gonna say y'all are just gonna say that y'all want to see the thing uh, it's 59 minutes oh no that one minute to spare <laughs> that one minute to spare bro uh. Uh, there's a video called Homebody coming out. That's like old Resident Evil games. It's basically the same link. No, the fuck it's not. <laughs> no, it is not. You have free will. Yeah, I know. But at the same time, like, duh, like, I'm still trying to give y'all what y'all want. But like, God damn, bro. Like, uh, chat, did y'all see this? If you follow my Instagram, you've seen it. Uh, uh, uh. Yo, motherfuckers, motherfuckers! I, I'm Dante. Howdy, 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 howdy! Yo, look at my hair! Like, the, look at the hair! Like that shit is crazy. That shit is crazy. Then y'all, then y'all got this. Then y'all got it for me. Um, then y'all got it for me. Oh, I'm still recording.